millions and millions of empty cartridges. I'm on a mission to find out how to throw them away responsibly. Here alone at the West London Shooting School, there are about 20 million cartridges. It's an impressive and very famous monument. Uh, Jonathan, you've got a bit of a, a bit of a problem here, haven't you? It's more, more of a sort of statement of might as we see it. I mean, we, it's, it, it's a quite a well-known feature, our cartridge mountain. Um, and people sort of come to sort of see it and to take photos of it. And we have collectors come from Holland to take empties from the heat. But it is, it is something that one day we might have to do something about. But in the meantime, we're quite happy adding to the heap. Well, it, it sort of illustrates a general point just now. We, yeah. We've got to get rid of cartridges. Yeah. We can't drop them yeah. anymore, can we? I mean, you, you, we always tell people that we do Young Shots courses here and we tell one of the, the children that sort of one of the first things they should remember is to pick up empty cartridges. And there is a slight irony that you're telling them to pick them up from the fields, take them home, put them in a bag and they then end up in a hole elsewhere. But at least you're sort of filling a landfill rather than littering the countryside. But there is a point that ultimately what to do with all these, in our case, of 20 odd million plastic cases. Now, if somebody came up with a brilliant way to recycle them and, and, and charge you for the, for the pleasure, what would you say to that? I'd say wonderful until the part where we got charged. I think most of us love the idea of being green. Shooting as a sport actually does a great deal for the countryside and the environment. Um, and where possible, we do our bit here as well. But that cost ultimately would have to be passed on to our clients. And I suspect they'd be happier to look at our colourful mound rather than have to pay the uplift in price it would cost. So to paraphrase of Jerry Maguire, you had me until you said cost. Ah, uh, cost. That's what it all comes down to. We have to strike a balance between what makes ecological and economical sense. Well, there's a man in Lincolnshire who feels he has come up with the answer. He says it isn't going to break the bank and, you never know, you might sleep better at night. Robert Moore recycles stuff. Loads of it. And his company, AgriCycle, has franchises all over the country. Many are run by farmers and together they realised the huge volume in the shape of these that were heading to landfill unnecessarily. So before we do a Carol Vorderman with the costs, let's have a guided tour of this incredible bit of bulletproof kit. Good, so this is, uh, Robert, this is the raw material, is it? Yeah, this is uh, the cartridge that's come in from the game shoots or, or the um, clay pigeon shoots. It's the raw material that we want. To, to process, as you can see, you've got paper card uh, cases along along with plastic and uh, cases. You've got loads of different kinds of cartridges in there as well. I can see. I can see. I think I've a handful of fives. Yeah, it makes no difference whether the, the four ten cartridges, sixteen bore, twenty bore. It makes no difference. You can sort of tell forensically. You can tell what kind of shoots they've come off, can't you? Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it is. Um, but like I say, it makes no difference what's in that bag. Um, whether there's even live cartridge in there. You live know, we, cartridges. Yep, we can pr process them all. It's all controlled. You know, when the cartridge goes off, it's controlled. Inside a, yep. a container. Yep. And the, the uh, and the lead is, is again, it, it's caught and recycled along with any cardboard in there, any bottles that are in there, it's all recycled. So you, you 100%. Chuck in there. Now, anything that goes in there is 100% recycled. This is the main piece of kit here. Um, this is where everything drops in to start with. This is where the shredding takes place and most of the separation is done. This is where the live cartridge will go off in the hopper, all controlled. Right. Do you hear the bangs? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you'll hear those. So it comes out of there up the conveyors again, which has got all the magnets, a series of magnets all in there, yeah. to take out the product, and then into the granulator, that's where all the plastic goes. Yes. Up there, it's all granulated, and then you've got the evacuation up there for the paper, and the dust separation goes on up there. Okay. And then you've got the product in there, which is the granulated plastic. So park benches, that sort of thing? Park benches, um, speed ramps, all sorts of things like that. Robert realised that one way of keeping the cost down was by working with other companies, which are perhaps swinging by shooting schools, arriving with heavily laden lorries and leaving empty. What a waste. I thought, well, here's something that could go green, that could be very important to the environment, help the shooters. We want to do everything we can to promote shooting. And uh, I met with Robert liked what he was doing and where we came into play was we offered to pick up the cartridges when we deliver clays. Have you got a commitment here with the Clay Vision Company to be more green? Absolutely, that's my own personal philosophy. 
we're, we're seeing that change within the whole group, Mr. Laporte and so forth. Everybody is starting to take a closer look at what we can do to pr protect the environment. No, the spotlight's never really fallen on clay grounds in the past, though. Um, do you think they'll thank you for bringing the... I hope they will. I think as long as we work together that we can find solutions. I'm hopeful. So Laporte are hopeful, but Robert has to convince the big shooting schools. AgriCycle had a strong presence at the game fair this year. Anyone who had a go in the clay pigeon arena would have spotted the AgriCycle bins. One of the professionals on call was John Bidwell. He runs High Lodge Shooting School in Suffolk. He's convinced that AgriCycle has got a great idea and shoots should take the chance of being greener. It's, it's great that uh, Robert is on board with this because he's, I think he's onto something quite good because uh, there is a big problem getting rid of these cases, you know. I mean, they, uh, you can't burn them anymore and, you know, to dump them costs, you know, costs money. And, uh, and he's making use of them and turning them into a, a usable product again. You know, in particularly for the, for the shooting schools where they produce, you know, they are getting a, a lot of waste, you know, from, the, from this product. And uh, it certainly is, you know, it's, it's good for the sport. It, it makes us look, you know, we're doing something for the environment and all the rest of it, which we are. And uh, I think it will catch on. So let's get down to business. Just how much does recycling cost? And what's the quote we can take back to Jonathan for taking away his mountain? The 20 million cartridge would charge him £250 administration fee. That's it? That's it. But he has to get them to us. Tell him to put them in the back of his Range Rover. Well, you know, if, if you use the walking floor type vehicles, like the one that's in the, in the, in the yard now, they hold 2.2 million cartridges. So 10 of those? Ten of those. So he did, um, and they, they work out about four hundred and fifty pounds from there. So it's about you'd be about four and a half thousand quid plus two hundred fifty for you. Whole yep. thing for under five grand. You yep. can clear that path. Absolutely. We'll take that message back to him, Robert. Thank you very much. No problem at all. So there is an alternative to landfill, and maybe next time you buy a box of cartridges, it's worth thinking about just how many thousands of shots you've fired in your lifetime, and how many benches you could claim as your own.